So since it is oxidation reaction, I thought it would be a good idea to dive right in the chemical part of uh, the presentation. So here is um, the start of the oxidation reaction chain. So these reactions are uh, very complex. There is many and there is a lot of chains, but everything kind of starts here. So don't worry, it looks complex, but it's gonna be easy. Uh, you always start with an oxygen that needs to get activated through a redox reaction. It has a very strong affinity with um, iron. So that's why here you see iron, but in reality, any redox reaction can um, start this uh, activation of the oxygen. Activation of the oxygen to produce a hydroperoxyl radical. This hydroperoxyl radical is going to react um, as a strong affinity with phenolic compounds, but the easily oxidable phenolic compounds such as hydroxycinamic acids. It's going to oxidize them into a quinone. So you are producing a quinone, which is uh, the molecule that you see here with the double O. This quinone is very unstable, and this quinone can react with different uh, components of the wine. The first one is going to be glutathione. So this quinone reacts with glutathione to produce um, a molecule that is called GRP, or grape reaction product. Uh, this is going to stop the reaction. So the glutathione is a great natural antioxidant that is actually a quinone scavenger. It scavenges the quinone, block it here, we stop the reactions. Once we don't have glutathione anymore, the quinone is going to start reacting with other phenolic compounds, which mostly reacts with the unstable phenolic compounds such as free anthocyanin. And your free anthocyanin that is usually responsible of the color will become brown. But also this uh, polymerization via the quinone is going to lead to loss of structure, loss of color and browning. Last point where the quinone can work, can react with, is the aromas. So the quinone can uh, oxidize or react with aromas such as thiolic compounds and lose it, so we lose them, resulting in a loss of freshness and loss of aroma. So that's already one thing, but it's not finished. In the chemical oxidation reaction, there is also the Fenton reaction. So there is a production of H2O2 or hydrogen peroxide that will get activated as an oxygen via a redox reaction, exchange of electrons, into this hydroxyl radical. This hydroxyl radical is very dangerous because it is not selective. It can oxidize everything that is present in the wine, starting with the most concentrated molecule, which is ethanol. So ethanol gets oxidized in acetaldehyde. And here you are going to understand the snowball effect because acetaldehyde, so there is production of acetaldehyde and any aldehyde, but acetaldehyde will have a strong affinity with SO2. So acetaldehyde will bind with SO2, which means that you are losing your antioxidant protection, and acetaldehyde is increasing your redox potential, which means that you are facilitating these two uh, exchange of um, electron, these two activation of oxygen and hydrogen peroxide. So. It is uh, a lot of different mechanisms that are uh, involved here and it has a snowball effect. So the more you oxidize and the uh, more you will get oxidized. Um, so let's see how we can control this. I'm not saying to stop it. I'm just talking about tools that are available to control it. The first thing is obviously to uh, reduce the amount of those dissolved oxygen and the contact with oxygen. Then we can scavenge the radicals. So we can scavenge this radical with a molecule, which is usually tannins, we're going to talk about it, that will react stronger with the radical than other compounds present in the wine. We can make sure we preserve our glutathione present in our grapes, and also we can enhance the glutathione, so increasing this the potential of the wine to trap uh, the quinone, to scavenge the quinone and stop the reaction. And finally, we can also stabilize our unstable uh, phenolic compounds. So we can eliminate some of these hydroxycinamic acids that are precursors of oxidation, but we can also stabilize our free anthocyanins uh, and not make them free anymore, so less sensitive to reacting with the quinone. So that's what we're going to talk about today. 
starting with limiting dissolved oxygen. So how to limit dissolved oxygen? That's a pretty standard um, recommendation here. Uh, it's a uh, check uh, your cellar practices. It's something you will have to uh, make sure you follow all the way uh, from grape reception to bottling. Uh, you can measure DO, you can use inert gas every time you do a transfer, your topping schedule, limit the movement, use qualitative equipment, a particular the pump. At bottling, uh, it's very important to make sure you work with a bottling line that can be inert, where you control the oxygen and you limit the oxygen. Think about it, once your wine is in bottle, that's it, that's done, you can do nothing else. So the idea here is to prepare your wine um, ready to be consumed and then you can you you make it in the bottle as you would like the consumer to enjoy it then your choice of closure is going to give you the ability to age it longer so there is nowadays great analogical tools that uh, can exactly tell you how much oxygen are going through uh, the closure which will help you controlling the shelf life of your wine and understand if you want to release the wine in six months in two years or uh, in two weeks. Okay, within the cellar action, I want to bring your attention to the cold stabilization. So if you look at uh, the table that is in the screen here, we are looking at the average dissolved oxygen by cellar action, and you can see that the cold stabilization is always the highest. Um, there is one reason for this, is because we are uh, working at cold temperature, and at cold temperatures, the oxygen can dissolve better. Or you increase the solubility of the oxygen. So we are able to dissolve more oxygen. Then you are going to warm up your tank to get ready for bottling. And your tank is going to consume all of it at once. So you are giving like a big shot of oxygen just at the last step before bottling, which you see the result usually a few months after, uh, which the results are oxidation. So. This is the most risky step within your cellar, it's a cold stabilization. So it is uh, very interesting to think about an alternative to uh, reduce the risk of uh, losing quality and uh, not controlling the shelf life of your wine. There is great alternative out there. Um, CMC is one of them, uh, KPA, Arabic gum and manoprotein. All these alternatives to cold will help you achieving uh, tartaric stability in a much reduced time without having any racking, but also uh, with uh, not involving cold temperature. I'm happy to talk about the pros and cons of each uh, product here in the question and answer portion, but also we will have a webinar just fo focalizing on uh, cold stabilization. So the second step here is uh, talking about scavenging oxygen radicals. We know tannins are the best for this. We, we know from their structure that tannins are the best for this, but then there is many different types of tannin existing uh, with different origin. Tannins can come from oak, can come from grape seeds, can come from grape skin, can come from gall nuts. So all these different origin gives to the tannin different properties. So it's interesting to look at which tannin as the most as oxygen radical scavenging effect. So here, uh, some result from uh, Adeline Vigneault that she uh, basically uh, studied the different uh, rates of oxygen consumption of different tannins. So she was comparing different origin of tannins uh, in a very controlled environment. And basically the conclusion here is that uh, the tannins that consume the fastest and has the strongest affinity for oxygen radicals are the oak tannins. Okay, so we did the same experiment with our own tannins at La Matavier. And as you can see, we have the same type of result. Our oak tannins, which are tannisense porte and tannisense volume, have the strongest uh, capacity to consume oxygen, so to react with oxygen radicals. And then the one that works the less still work pretty good in scavenging oxygen, but not as good as the oak, is our gallic tannin, which completely correlates with the results of uh, vigno. 
Here, an interesting point is we have two different oak tannin. One is toasted, the tannescence forte. One is untoasted, the tannescence volume. And as you can see, they don't have the same consumption of oxygen uh, grade. It happened that even if the tannescence forte has the strongest or fastest oxygen consumption, uh, so more affinity with the oxygen radical, I usually recommend to use the tannescence volume. Uh, any racking, any transfer of movement you do, you take the risk to dissolve oxygen and to have radicals using 0.5 to 1 gram per hectoliter of the tannin. Tannescence volume is not going to impact your mouthfeel, is not going to impact your aromas, and it's going to scavenge the radicals that you might create. Tannescence forte can be used for this too, but it does give you some toasted notes on the oak. It's more an aromatic tannin. There is another advantage to use uh, tannescence volume into uh, the wine every time you do a transfer. You scavenge oxygen radical, but you also uh, stabilize the wine towards oxidation or reduction. So here I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, buffer capacity towards redox potential. It's the concept and the idea here when we're talking about shelf life improvement and um, controlling oxidation reaction is to have a lower redox potential. So you make the, the reactions of activation of the oxygen and the hydrogen peroxide more difficult. And then you want a stable uh, redox potential through time. So the wine doesn't fall easily from oxidation or reduction. And this, so this action of buffering the redox potential and stabilizing the wine we know that sulfur, glutathione, or tannins are doing it. Within our tannins, uh, we look at um, their uh, capacity to stabilize the wine or to increase the resistance towards oxidation or reduction, which is basically by uh, putting some current through a solution of tannin and reading the intensity of the signal. This is going to give us uh, the, capa the antioxidant capacity of the solution, uh, which is actually the number that we can calculate, which is the air area under this curve that you see here. This is about thermogram. The tannescence volume is our uh, blue line here, and on red we have one of our in-house reference tannin. As you can see, when we tested, I'm not putting you all the tannins, but when we tested the tannins, tannescence volume was the best one that has the strongest um, antioxidant capacity, so the strongest buffering effect on the wine, okay, because we have the best area. IGO is the number of the area, which you can see we are at 27 here, it's, it's very high. So, tannescence volume is very efficient to scavenge radical, but not only. It will actually um, help you to make your wine more resistant to any oxidation or reduction. So trying to explain it with a, a more visual um, aspect, imagine your wine is this man walking on the string. Uh, you can um, easily, depending the weather condition or the environmental condition, fall towards the oxidation or the reduction. That's a very, um, it's an equilibrist uh, job, basically. The job of tannescence volume is to make this line bigger. So we are making this line wider so we are improving the equilibrium of this man that is the wine we are improving the stability and the balance making the wine much more stable and resistant to environmental conditions so i hope it makes sense please feel free to ask me any question um, after the presentation i will uh, do my best to answer them the next step here uh, is to preserve the natural antioxidant uh, protection, which is actually talking about glutathione. You saw in the first graph, glutathione has a very powerful effect of scavenging the quinone. Glutathione is present naturally in our grapes. It's actually very easy to extract as it is in the pulp. So as soon as you press, you extract the glutathione. So now the idea is to preserve it. Because what happens is, since it's easy to extract, as soon as you have oxygen in contact with your juice, you lose your glutathione as well, because it does its job as antioxidant. And it, 
it happened that in juice, all these reactions are much faster than in wine because they are more enzymatic than chemical. So to preserve it, uh, you want to protect your grapes and your juice from oxidation using dry ice, using inert gas, uh, using cold temperature. You can also use uh, a logical tool to actually uh, inhibit any enzymatic reactions uh, such as tannins. Important to respect the integrity of the grapes, to open the grapes only when uh, you are ready for it. And the pressing is usually where you are actually juicing, so preparing the, uh, extracting all the glutathione and losing all the glutathione too. During pressing, there is always presence of oxygen, except when you use an inert press. Booker developed the Booker inertis, that is actually a press that is fully enclosed and linked to a nitrogen balloon as you can see in the picture here. So as soon as the press is full, we close it. When the press is pressing, the nitrogen is going into the juice pan that is a closed um, tank to protect and to make sure there is no oxygen contact. When the membrane is deflating, the nitrogen is going into the press to replace the volume of the membrane to make sure um, there is no oxygen in contact with the skins. Okay, so there is no oxygen contact, no oxygen reactions. We preserve the glutathione. Today, I'm just showing you the glutathione result, but we have many results on the Booker inertis um, that I'm happy to show you in another time. As you can see, in a normal pressure, uh, in a classic uh, pressing without inert gas, you lose the glutathione after 20 minutes. It's reacting with oxygen that is present. While if we press with inert press, such as Booker inertis, we maintain the glutathione at uh, the end of the press, the same level than at the beginning. So we are here at about 20 milligram per liter. Another way uh, to preserve glutathione during the winemaking process is also the aging. Here you have, um, result of a study done by Laving in 2005, where she looked at a different type of aging, so new barrel, used barrel, and with lease or no lease. Okay, and we are also looking at the aromatic um, profile of the wine after the aging. What we are seeing here is basically we lose glutathione with time, which is normal as there is oxygen going through the barrel, you have this microoxygenation that happens and the glutathione acts as an antioxidant, so it's gonna react with the glutathione present. Then when we are also seeing is when there is a racking, so when we are eliminating the lees, we are losing faster the glutathione. So we are losing this antioxidant effect of the lees. The lees has the power of, uh, the, the ability of consuming oxygen even faster than the wine, so they act as an antioxidant and protect the wine from all these reactions. And when we are using a new barrel, we have more uh, oxygen going through uh, the, the pores of the barrel, so we are losing faster our glutathione. Okay, this completely translates into the analysis here. We are looking at in pink, you have uh, the thiolic, the 3MH thiols, which is a grapefruit flavor, which is here representing the freshness of the wine. And then <coughs> In black, you have the sotolon, that is uh, the molecule associated with rancid aromas. And in uh, yellow, you have all the aromas of honey and waxy uh, characters that are premature aging aromas. And you can see pretty easily that when we are in a used barrel with, with the leaves, we don't produce so much of this um, premature aging aromas and we maintain the freshness. As soon as we rack, we lose a lot of our thiolic compound, a lot of our aromas, and we start to produce more of these um, oxidized and premature aging aromas. Okay, another fact on glutathione is here two different uh, trials that I also want to show you because we are not talking only, since we talk about shelf life, I want to show you a different moment we are seeing during aging. Here is one year after bottling, the bottle has been store, stored at 20 Celsius, and we are looking at the effect of the addition of glutathione with oxygen and without, with sulfur and without, on the thiolic compound, so on the loss of freshness. 
in yellow you have the control with no glutathione in green you have 20 milligrams per liter of glutathione so pretty much what we can save uh, using a booker in Ertis. and in blue you have 50 milligrams per liter of glutathione here when you have oxygen and no sulfur so no protection from oxidation the glutathione does a very good job at protecting the wine and maintaining freshness the second uh, graph here is when uh, we do have we don't have oxygen we protect from oxygen so there is less precursors of these reactions there is still redox reaction that happens and there is no sulfur so no protection against oxidation the glutathione help managing the thiols and keeping the thiols one year after we still have more thiolic compounds in the wine that got glutathione in the last uh, graph here what you can see is when there is no oxygen and sulfur so antioxidant protection well, the glutathione still have an impact, but much lower impact because the sulfur is here to act as an antioxidant and there is no oxygen that uh, basically can start the reactions of oxidation. So two important conclusions here. One is that glutathione work even one year after as an antioxidant and protect the freshness of the wine. Second, glutathione can be an alternative to sulfur for this purpose of keeping freshness and managing, managing shelf life of the wine. Let's keep jumping in time and let's look four years after. Uh, you have a table here where we're comparing a control with a wine with glutathione, 10 milligrams per liter at this, uh, in this trial. The bottles stored at 20 Celsius. Four years after, we are looking at in green, you see the two tiles, which the control lost all of them while the glutathione uh, trial wine still have a lot of thiolic compounds so it's still very fresh and very young and vibrant four years after if we look at the uh, premature aging molecule uh, in pink here so as the sotolon that we talked about the rancid aromas and the amino acetophenone which is aa which is the aroma responsible of honey waxy um, on the premature aging you can see that we produce much more in the control that was actually not protected and lost his life during these four years while the glutathione is still a uh, very limited amount. So all these graphs showing you that any time in the step of the process glutathione is a very powerful tool, very strong antioxidant that can replace sulfur but can also help you managing your shelf life, making your wine fresher for a longer time and making this oxidation much slower, um, absorbing any shock. So the question now is we saw how to preserve, which is controlling oxidation from the beginning, especially on grapes. Uh, the other question is, can we enhance it? We cannot add pure glutathione in wine, but we can add yeast derivates rich in glutathione. Here I'm going to talk about aroma protect. You have to be careful on uh, yeast derivate or yeast nutrients rich in sulfur peptide or glutathione. They all have different composition. Uh, we do have two uh, in house at La Montabier. We have Optithiol and Aroma Protect. Some of them, such as Optithiol, have a much more uh, spread out composition between glutathione and cysteine derivates, and they are great to use in juice to give precursors to the yeast to produce thiolic compounds. Aroma Protect here, we are talking about a very rich, uh, re very rich product in glutathione. So we use it towards the end of the fermentation when the yeast cannot assimilate it, when the yeast cannot produce thiol out of it, but the glutathione can be here and be available as an antioxidant, as a quinone scavenger. So it increases the natural antioxidant resistance uh, and it elongates the shelf life of the wine. We use it towards the end of fermentation. We don't want the yeast to consume it. We want to make sure this glutathione is here and ready to do its job as antioxidant, 15 to 30 grams per hectoliters. Let me show you some results of this because it's, it's very impressive. So three months of aging, a control versus aroma protect that we add at the end of fermentation. You can see the wines are the same here. Three months after, we lost 76 to 100 percent of the tiles in the control. We lost 0 to 4 percent of tile into the one treated with Aroma Protect. Keep moving. Six months of aging, 
uh, we lost, here we are looking at the diminution of aromas, we lost 55 to 75% of the thiolic compounds six months after aging. We lost 20 to 30% of the thiolic compounds with aroma protect six months after aging. So aroma protect is a great tool for any wine, white, rosé, red. It can work with any type of wine. It can be an alternative to sulfur. Um, as we saw previously, even in a long term, the glutathione is an alternative to sulfur for antioxidant protection, but it can also help you maintaining the freshness of your wine. Uh, doesn't, you don't have to adjust as much your sulfur. You can use it in barrel or in tank, and it's very commonly used in wines that have to age longer in tank than expected because your bucking date got delayed, for example or you, you know, your change uh, of uh, sales strategy change and you have to uh, hold this volume in a tank and you want to maintain freshness, Aroma Protect will be the solution here. Last point in this um, oxidation reactions and how we can improve the shelf life of the wine is to stabilize the precursors of oxidation. The first part is gonna be, we can eliminate these easily oxidable phenolic compounds, but which are unstable phenolic compounds, precursors of oxidation, they are hydroxycinamic acids. Fining is going to be the way to do this. Fining will eliminate this unstable phenolic compound, we eliminate the oxidized phenolic compound, and will participate overall to the wine stability and improve clarification. Which type of fining are we talking about for this purpose? Any fining that is based on PVPP, casein, or uh, any alternative such as yeast derivate. So we have a pure casein or potassium caseinate with casein mix, a PVPP casein blend with polymix, and its alternative that is vegan polymix nature, that is PVPP, yeast extract, and bentonite. These three products will work great. Uh, usually we prefer to recommend them on juice and fermentation, but it is something that is never too late to do. So you can actually use this fining agent on wine, on red, on white, on rosé. It will help you stabilize your wine and protecting your wine from oxidation that are not controlled, but also elongate the shelf life of your wine. You can see the, the trials here. We added polymix nature during fermentation and we are looking at the wine two months after fermentation. Uh, we look at all the aromatic profile here and the amount of molecule. And as you can see, uh, the control and the, the polymix nature has more than double of aromas than the control. And most of the aromas that we actually saved is the 3MH, so the thiolic compound that are the most sensitive to oxidation. Okay, so very important, you can use uh, finding agents such as polymix nature to really remove this unstable phenolic compounds, which will allow you to not produce as much quinone, so you will not have as much oxidation. The last point here is more focusing on red, because the other strategy is to stabilize the phenolic compounds that can be oxidized by the quinone, such as anthocyanins. We do know uh, that the best color we want to do, the most stable color we want to do, is a molecule that is anthocyanin tannin complex with an ethanol bridge. We know that there is some tannins that are better than others for this, which are usually great tannins. I made a webinar focusing on color stability that I invite you to watch. Today I'm just giving you results um, on what we found works the best to stabilize in a long lasting uh, way the color. So here is trial that we did with different of our tannins to see how we can stabilize the color and how we can have it uh, less sensitive to oxidation and less sensitive to bleaching post malolactic. So we added all these tannins of polysaccharide during fermentation, and then we are now reading the intensity of the color. So the control starts with lower color because we are looking here at post malolactic, so we already uh, didn't stabilize the color in the control while soft V, which is a catechin and, mano and poly polysaccharide um, complex, worked very good in stabilizing color. Same with the granular, we have more color. Say, same with the nature soft, that is um, manoprotein, and with the tan excellence, that is a tannin of grape and oak blended. Then we are looking at the loss of this color three months after uh, the malolactic, so once we 
got some oxidation plus we also got some um, sulfur that bleached the color that was unstable and as you can see we lose eight percent in the tech control and the soft envy only three percent with the nature soft so the manoprotein so the manoprotein really managed to stabilize in a long lasting way the anthocyanin and make them not sensitive to bleaching and then the tan excellence is actually we are not losing color at all we're increasing the color the sulfur actually helped to participate to a um, brighter color and we get more red color out of this interesting thing here is uh, the one that lost the most color is actually the granular which are like oak uh, chips or oak granular we know oak are very good at scavenging radicals as you we saw previously but this explains us that losing 12 percent when you put sulfur explains us that oak tannins with anthocyanin are not the most stable complex they are not the best tannin to stabilize color so because three months after uh, malolactic is not enough to talk about shelf life we push this trial until bottling and here are the analysis one month after bottling where you can see that the tan excellence still have 21 percent more color than the control that didn't get any tannin so it is a long lasting color that really help you having this brighter and redder color less sensitive to browning in the bottle for a longer time so tan excellence is a grape tannin that will be focusing on making this anthocyanin tannin ethanol complex with ethanol bridge and blend with oak tannins that are great to scavenge radical oxygen so we are talking about a long lasting effect the application here we usually add it end of malolactic ferment end of alcoholic or malolactic fermentation 10 to 30 gram per hectoliter if you want you can add it pre-bottling too but we are talking more about five gram per hectoliter here so the take-home message um it was a pretty complex presentation but in reality we can summarize it pretty easily which shelf life depends on oxidation reaction the idea here is really to prepare your wine as stable and as good as you can during the full process of winemaking and so at bottling you know your wine is going to be able to absorb any change of um, environment temperature oxygen but also if you choose your right um, closure you will manage this environment much better but the idea is to prepare the wine as good as we can and as stable as we can to maintain freshness and also to make sure we can maintain freshness if we have a delay delay in bottling a day and we have to hold the tank in the wine in tank control dissolve oxygen that's an obvious point scavenge oxygen radical that's a very interesting strategy to any transfer any wine movement that you know you're going to dissolve oxygen and you're going to produce radicals use 0.5 to 1 gram per hectoliter of tan essence volume it will also tan essence volume will also help you to stabilize your wine redox potential and increase your buffer capacity which means that basically after two three uh, addition transfer your wine will have enough um, buffer it be enough stable to actually not be sensitive to oxidation or reduction preserve your natural antioxidants that's very important especially on the grape phase be careful with the reception it's something you don't see right away but you actually see it few years after once your wine is in bottle that you lost your glutathione but you can enhance it uh, with aroma protect aroma protect is also a great tool during aging for any type of wine but also if you have to hold your wine in tank and then the strategy of stabilizing precursor oxidation is a pretty uh, ancestral strategy that still works and we are not changing this it does uh, show amazing results polymix nature is a great finding agent that is a vegan alternative to casein to eliminate easily oxidable phenolic compound when we are talking about red wine we are also talking about stabilizing the color in a long lasting way and tan excellence will be um, your tool for this Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, you can email me any question you have and um, have a good day.